Here's Brody Brazil. So now we get to the biggest questions of the 2022 Oakland A's. And these are the things that I can't tell you answers to. Like, I'm going to set these up as important topics, but I can't tell you specifics. And I don't even want to make predictions on these. But these are the themes going into this season, which I've got my eyes on. Shamanaya, Frankie Montas. Their names are on Twitter. Their names are being whispered. Will they be dealt? And Ramon Laureano could and should be up there too. We just know he's going to miss the first 27 games of the year no matter what. But Manaya and Montas, I, I feel for them. All they can do is prepare themselves to be Oakland A's on opening day and for the months of April, May, June, July, September, October. But in the back of their mind, they see reality. They're only human. Okay? They are professionals. They will be professional. I know this. Spoke to both of them not long ago. Uh, but I also and I don't even need this confirmed by them. They are they're only human. They want to be put in a place where they can succeed. They want to know where they're going to land. Who they just want to know their life situation. But what will this A's team be like? Minus Manaya, minus Frankie Montas. I've been doing here a whole extended preview of the team. Um, on this live stream, and you'll notice I didn't really include them because I, I honestly don't know their status for an entire season. It's a compliment to Manaya and Montas. This is what other teams are out to get, pitchers like them. And if the Oakland A's are truly trying to get value out of commodities right now, those are two commodities right now. Another question I have about the Oakland A's for 22 is just bullpen strength. We talked about Lou Trevino earlier as the closer. Who's going to set him up? Who are, who are your plus guys? Who are your minus guys? Um, it's one thing to have an idea what the rotation will shape up like, like with Montas and Manaya or without, but um, the bullpen is, a, is another real area of transition this year that's not getting as much attention. And... I'm just I'm curious to see how it can work out. I don't think the A's are going to have the luxury of giant leads in a bunch of games. I think that bullpen is going to be highly counted on, but I, I I don't have a read right now on on what their what their calling card will be. Another question I have, not more about the A's, but for the Oakland A's, is what's the AL West going to be like? I mean, you literally had the Texas Rangers spending a half billion dollars this past winter on free agency. We know that the Angels, so long as they have Trout and Otani, are always going to be in that mix. We know that the Astros, even though they've gone through some changes and decisions, that they're always going to be the team to beat until they're not anymore. And the Mariners hammered the A's their last 13 head-to-head meetings. Uh, Seattle won all 13 of them last year in a row. Seattle was largely the reason why the A's were not a playoff team last year. Seattle alone. And they didn't make the playoffs either. They haven't been to the playoffs since 2001, 2002, something like that. <clears throat> been a long time. So what does the AL West, what does the rest of this division bring for the Oakland A's? Because sometimes... I, I hate to say it, but sometimes bad teams sit in bad divisions and they don't look they don't look that bad. But in the AL West, if you can't keep up with the horses like Houston and the Angels and Texas and what the Mariners are, should be, uh, you'll get noticed. You know, it really will. I'm not saying I'm not not suggesting that that's how it'll be, but I'm just stating the facts, when you play each of those teams 18, 19 times a year, um, yeah, there's basically 80 games right there that can really decide what your record looks like. H healthy veterans. Now, I'm talking about especially the the Thameses, the Votes, the Jed Lowrys. Um, I'm saving the young guys for last, but you know, can you keep the eldest players on your team, the ones you know what to expect, um, you know what you're going to get out of them, can you keep those guys healthy? If you can, huge bonus, but 
we all know what 162 is like. So I'm saying that what I like right now on paper, um, it's got to play out that way. And then last but not least here, what young players emerge over the course of 162? Christian Pache, is this the start of something? Is he MLB ready? Is he the next big thing? Um, Olsen, Chapman, and Bassett alone, those players, trades, they return 10 individuals in return for the Oakland A's. So there's a lot, there's going to be a lot to keep tabs on this year. Who's doing what, at what level, where, how are they progressing? Also other players that are already in the pipeline. But who emerges this year? Like what players at the major league level will we be surprised by? Will it be just one player? Will it be by the end of 22? Will I have three names on a list like this? Like, wow, look, look at the presence we unwrapped this year. I don't know. I, Again, TV guy, not a scout. But I'm just telling you that the amount of young players that emerged this year is going to be critical to how fast and the pace of the A's regenerating.